We always thought that it was us punching nature. We came to realize that nature can punch us back. We are unlocking Pandora's box with this issue of climate change. And this thing that is happening right now with COVID-19 should be just a warning of what is to come. This is not as bad as it could get. I specialize on the analysis of large databases. O originally, we were focusing on just species, you know, like as ecologists, we would like to know why species are where they are, and we look at things like temperature, the climate, things like that. There was a moment in which we realized that the distribution of a species now is influenced by humans as much as it in is it influenced by climatic variables. So that kind of led us to a study also how humans are impacting biodiversity, and we came to discover that the impact is actually the other way around. Is biodiversity now impacting people? The capacity for you to feed yourself, to have a nice house, to not be sick by these diseases are now being affected by biodiversity. So we always thought that it was us punching nature. We came to realize that nature can punch us back. Basically what happens here is that we are dis disturbing the habitats where these species are used to be, and by doing so, what we are doing is forcing these animals to move to places where we live. And it's this close contact between us and these wild animals that is increasing the transmission of these diseases. So when you come to understand that, you realize that climate change is one of the major drivers of the transmission of diseases. Think about things like a wildfire. You know, in Australia, there are hundreds of case examples of bats now losing their habitat as a result of moving to the cities just because the wildfires destroy their habitats. Next thing you know, there is a bat hanging out from a tree. They take a dump. A kid is just walking by, touches that thing, and now you just got that disease. So hundreds, thousands of pathogens being taken away from the field, from nature, into urban areas because we are messing up where these species are used to be. Climate change, we normally think about heat, right? The warming, but it turns out that when you warm up the, the planet, you are triggering a lot of responses as well. One of them is drought. So what happens is the air starts getting hotter, the water that is in the soil evaporates much faster, so you get drought. So you combine heat with drought, next thing that you had is heat waves, and if you had droughts and heat waves, the next thing is a wildfire. So, that's just an example of how these climatic changes, despite the fact that it's just one thing that we are doing, which is to put CO2 in the air, is triggering all of these consequences that are influencing these animals. And unfortunately, these animals, at times, they don't play nice, just like we came to learn with the COVID-19. There are hundreds of examples in the higher latitudes. We found that, for instance, when you get a snow, there are many animals that find shelter under the snow because they are white. Because the snow is now melting and these animals are white, now they become visible and they get eaten by predators. These animals are no fool. They're gonna find a place where to hide. It turns out that they go and hide into the people's houses and they bring with them ticks and fleas. And the fleas come with a lot of different diseases like rabies. Lyme disease, and you see these spikes on diseases again because we are messing up with the habitats where these animals are. Again, there are hundreds of case examples on the, of that. Yeah, the Zika, all of these diseases that are transmitted by mosquitoes are a big one because now mosquitoes are not only increasing the geographical range because it's warmer at higher latitudes, but also because with the increasing precipitation, again, going back to the impacts of climate change when the water evaporates, when that water goes up, it has to come down and it comes down all creating at times floods and you create the perfect conditions for you to have mosquitoes breeding like crazy and any disease that comes with mosquitoes is gonna spike there. There is one disease that I found striking. Again, just for you to realize that this is nothing. This thing with the COVID-19, seriously, this is like a baby lion. 
baby lion in the sense that we are getting beaten, but this is by comparison to our disease that could come out from this. This is like nothing, man. Think about things like the anthrax. Anthrax is a disease with a huge mortality, about 50%. In, a, in the North Pole, a few years ago, not too long ago, I don't remember the sad day, a, an animal that died maybe 100 years ago for anthrax got frozen in time, covered with snow, because the snow is melting, this animal got exposed. A child came and grabbed this animal for some reason, and it got infected by anthrax. This was in Siberia? Siberia. In the, in the Russia, the Russian government acted so quickly to this that they, it, it didn't turn into an epidemic, but the contact was there. The case example is there of an anthrax now being removed because the snow is melting. I'm telling you, man, we are unlocking Pandora's box with this issue of climate change, and this thing that is happening right now with COVID-19 should be just a warning of what is to come. This is not as bad as it could get. And again, if we continue to disregard nature, uh, these things are gonna keep coming. And this is the thing that is terrifying for people like me. It's the fact that we are scared by, by, by the things that are happening right now with COVID-19. And again, by comparison to the things that might come, this is like nothing. Normally when you talk about these diseases and when Donald Trump is talking about these diseases and everybody, even the scientists, are talking adaptation to this. What are the policy implications of this? You will think, okay, we gotta improve our medical capacity, you know? But the problem that I see with this is that this is a very narrow view of the problem. Right now we are impacted by this disease, but think about the moment when we get impacted by a hurricane. So what are you gonna do there? Okay, now we gotta adapt by building houses that resist hurricanes, what about sea level rise? Now you have to raise the, the roads. So the problem of us having a narrow focus right now is the fact that we miss the bigger picture, which is the fact that these things are gonna keep coming just because of one thing, which is again, or disregard for nature in this case because of climate change. Personally, I will not adapt to this. Adapting to climate change means a couple things for me. One is to accept that we could not fix this problem. We get back. Future generations are gonna be looking at us in their adaptation level, realizing that we just gave up. That for me is something that I just don't wanna accept right now. The second problem for me with adaptation is to accept that we're gonna be living with this pain forever. The analogy that I like to give is imagine that I'm friends with Mike Tyson, every now and then he give me a punch. That's a problem. Adapting to that problem is for me to buy a helmet with nice protection so that every time that he punch me, I don't feel the pain. I adapted, so I'm gonna accept to live for the rest of my life, as far as I'm friends with Mike Tyson, wearing a helmet. I can put maybe air conditioning in there, I can put a screen, a whatever I want to make that helmet nicer, but do you wanna live with that helmet forever? That will also imply that you're gonna be living with that pain in your butt forever, which is Mike Tyson punching you every time. So this issue of adaptation I do, we shouldn't accept that. What we should do is try to fix the problem from the beginning and those things will never happen again. Yeah, we can come out much better at the other end of this disaster if we accept the real, if we understand better where this thing comes from. Right now, the way that I see things moving is for us to adapt to this problem. We want to evolve by adapting to this problem. But if we don't realize and we don't fix the underlying problem, that's kind of the thing that I fear the most with what is happening right now. I feel that we're gonna come stronger at the other end of this. My issue is, is that gonna be right or not? Right now, for instance, you see President Trump removing all of the environmental protections, right? And the reason for that obviously has good reasons, rem remarkably, which is to ensure that the economy doesn't get restrained by, by these environmental regulations. So he removed them all. The problem with that, again, is failing to realize that these regulations, environmental regulations, are put in place so that we prevent these things from happening in the first place. The fact that he did that makes me believe then that he just is not being advised well or whoever is advising him is not even realizing the consequences of these environmental destructions on the root of the problem. So again, the extent to which we can come out better at the end of this depends on whether people generally get to understand that this is just a, an input of us, this missing nature, and nature is just getting sick of it. Thank you very much. My pleasure.